Welcome back. In the last video we talked about how ethylene was an addition polymer and it allowed it to make polyethylene which is a very useful plastic. Now in this video we're going to cover um, how to actually make them. So if anyone has watched the last couple of videos I hinted at that this um, video would come of how to actually make polyethylene. And what I'll do first is I'll go over how we got from petroleum back to ethylene. That was a revision of one of the previous plot points. So what we did, we had petroleum first, which is crude oil, so crude oil, and um, for fractural distillation, we managed to make it separate into its individual parts, which included, not just, but it also included decane, and decane was a 10 carbon long hydrocarbon. When we then had two different ways to make them into smaller, we just wanted to get ethylene. Ethylene has two carbons, this is a 10 carbon hydrocarbon, so we wanted to break it into smaller bits, and the way we could do that, we had two choices. Either thermal cracking, and thermal cracking was using high temperatures between the 750 and 900 degrees Celsius um, to make it into small molecules such as ethylene. And the other way was catalytic cracking, that was using a zeolite catalyst and 500 degrees Celsius. So a bit less uh, temperature, but we had to have a catalyst to do that. Right, but these two steps, we both went from decane, which is a 10 carbon hydrocarbon, to ethylene. So now we had ethylene, um, but the actual dot point says, how do we go from ethylene to polyethylene? So ethylene, that was our monomer, and remember the monomer, so mono stands for one, and mer stands for unit, so one unit. Ethylene was one unit, but we wanted to know how to make it from one unit in something which was quite long, a long chain. That was the polyethylene. So there's two different steps, there's low density polyethylene and high density polyethylene. I'm going to cover the first step in some detail now. Um, how to make low-density polyethylene I covered in a nutshell in some of the last videos. But I'll go over it in detail in this one because you need to actually know it in detail because your dot point says outline the steps in the production of polyethylene. So you need to know the four steps I'm going to go through and how they happen as well. So first we've got this benzoyl peroxide which is this molecule here. And it has two oxygens. I've drawn them in slightly different colors so you can tell them apart. And at the moment, if you count the electrons, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and these are sharing, so eight, so eight each, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Each of these oxygens has eight electrons. Remember that eight was the magic number. Um, so I'm going to write down eight magic number, and I misspelled that, eight magic number. And the reason why it's a magic number is because all elements want to have eight electrons in the outer shell. That's their mission in life, more or less. So what we do though is we actually have temperature, we're going to put them under high temperatures. So this kind of a strange looking thing here is meant to be a flame or like a Bunsen burner. Um, we're not going to put them under a Bunsen burner but we are going to put them under high pressure and temperatures in the area of about 300 degrees Celsius. And the first step is called the initiation step. The reason why it's called the initiation step is because that high pressure and that high temperature is actually split. So you can imagine these are now split. Beforehand they were together, now we've got two by themselves. And now they're not called benzoyl peroxide anymore, they're called a peroxide peroxide radical. And the reason why they're called a radical is because they're missing an electron. So if we count again how many they have, because they're not sharing anymore, they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven each, which means they're missing one. So we've just taken away one of the electrons. We've just made them unhappy because they're only happy if they have that magic number of eight. So now what you can imagine is going to be the second stage, the activation stage. So the second stage is called the activation stage. And because they're unhappy, they're going to look for more electrons to bring them back to eight electrons. So you can, this is one of these peroxide radicals right here again. And it's going to be looking for electrons. And it's found those electrons in the ethylene. Remember, ethylene has that double bond which is really high in electrons, really dense in electrons. So the oxygen molecule, um, that oxygen compound has gotten attracted to those electrons. So what it will do, it will actually grab, so you can imagine it's going to grab the electron, this electron here, this one, grab that off this carbon and bring it in front so it can bind to it. So it has eight again. So I'll show that happening as well. So this electron is not there anymore because it is going to the other side because you can imagine that magic number of eight is what attracts 
this oxygen to it. So it's going to come closer, it's going to bind. Once it's bound, it has eight again. So now it's got one, two, three, four, and it shares these two, five, six, seven, eight. So that, that oxygen is happy. And um, the first carbon is also happy, it also has eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But the problem is, so because these are bonding, these are the bonds, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But the problem is the second carbon is not happy anymore. It's not um, sharing its second electron, the double bond has been broken. So this is where the double bond, double bond breaks. When oxygen steals one of the electrons, double bond breaks. And now this carbon will look for more. So it will look for more. So it's going to take this electron put the other side to look for more electrons because it wants to get to eight. So at the moment it has seven and it will attack the next ethylene that it can find. So it'll attack this one. And the same thing will happen again. So it's going to pull one off this one and then the other one on the, and the, this one will become the radical because it's going to be missing one. It's called the activation stage. The reason why it's called the activation stage is because we've activated the chain making. So these are making chains at the moment and we've activated by having the oxygen attack one of the ethylene structures. So each of these two were the ethylene. So this one was an ethylene here and this was also an ethylene. So both of these are ethylenes. So you can imagine now we start making that chain. At the moment it's only two uh, monomers long. So each one of these was a monomer. Each one of these was a monomer. At the moment it's only too long but we can go on and on and on. So the second, the third stage is called propagation stage. And if you look at the structure of these mo molecules, you'll see that this was what it was beforehand, but then that oxygen um, started the activation stage and destroyed double bond. So it's only a single bond. So each of these has a single bond because there's no more double bond. And now it comes to propagation. So that means the chain is growing longer. So chain growth chain growth and you can imagine this might become a thousand monomers long so even though I haven't drawn a thousand you can imagine there might be a thousand or even a hundred thousand more of these monomers joining so you can imagine in between these two there's a hundred thousand more of these ethylene molecules and to make this stop to make this chain reaction stop we have the termination stage what happens at the termination stage is we this so this is what I've got. I'll label these so you know where I'm where I am. We've got number one, which is the same as this one here, and we've got number two, which is the same as this one here. And what they're gonna do is they're actually gonna combine, they're gonna connect, and when they connect, they both have eight electrons, and the actual chemical reaction has stopped. The procedure has stopped. So at the moment, that, that cross is, is supposed to hint that they're missing one. They don't have a full set. So this one has seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This one also has seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And they're the last part. So they're this part of the chain, the last end of the chain. But if they come together, so if they join together, if they come together in a second, which I'll show, um, then they both have eight and it's happy and everything stops. So that's termination. So now they're going to come closer going to come closer. Once they do, they're going to bind, and when they bind, these crosses will go away because they're going to share that electron. They can share as well. They don't have to give. They can share. When they share, they've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight for this one, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight for the other one, which means once this happens, once they connect, the chain growth stops, they come together and it's just one long molecule which is joined at the ends, long molecule. And these can be 100,000 for low density polyethylene. That was the termination stage. We can also terminate it either for this, for the two chains meeting, so for meeting, or by lowering the temp, temperature, or the pressure. So remember we used high pressure and moderate temperatures. If we lower that, it will also terminate. So I'll go over that procedure again. We had our benzoyl peroxides at the beginning. We used high pressure and 300 degrees Celsius, which was the initiation stage, to break it apart. 
Now they were called the peroxide radicals. The peroxide radicals um, started to attack one of the ethylene structures to get back to the magic number of eight. Once that happened, it started a chain reaction because the ends of each of those ethylene structures was now missing an electron, and the ends then attacked another ethylene structure. And that meant there was more and more growth happening. The chain was growing, which was the next stage, the propagation stage. When the chain got to a certain point, they sometimes they met. When they met, they started sharing their electrons at two ends, which were radicals, which made them neutral, which made them fine again, which terminated that um, growth. Or they lower the temperature or pressure, which also st so ended that whole procedure. So that was how we make low-density polyethylene. Remember those four steps, initiation, activation, propagation, and termination, and how they happen as well. Next, we're going to cover the high-density polyethylene and how that's made. And that's made a lot easier. I mean, the actual procedure is a lot easier to remember than for low-density polyethylene. All you really need to know is you have a catalyst, something that speeds up a reaction, which is called the metallocene catalyst, M-A-T-A-L-L-O-C-E-N catalyst. What it does, it has this huge side chain, this part here, from the red and this part, not that important. The most important part is this chronium ion right here. What it does, it um, you have this long chain, so you've got the chain here, and you can imagine there's going to be one after the other attaching to it, and the way it attaches, you can imagine the chronium ion to be the assembly line. So what's it going to do? It's going to go and destroy that double bond to make sure that stuff can bind and make normal bonds out of it. And then it's going to bring it over. It's actually going to bring it over and attach it to the other ones. And it's going to do that step by step, one by one, until the chain is many thousands long. Right? So um, this metallocene catalyst kind of holds on to the chain, grabs the ethylene. So that was an ethylene molecule before, and that monomer, ethylene monomer. It grabs them one by one, breaks the double bond, and then attaches them to the rest of the chain. And the chain grow, grows quite long. Right, so that was high-density polyethylene. And that occurs at low pressure. So that's also important. Low-density polyethylene, that was high pressure. High-density polyethylene, that's low pressure. Now, for the characteristics of each, high-density polyethylene um, is has about 3 million grams per mole. It also is a straight molecule. So the other one, low-density polyethylene, is actually branched. This one was straight and much longer as well than, poly than the low-density polyethylene. So high-density polyethylene is 3 milligrams per mole. 3 milligrams per mole is straight and long, or longer than low-density polyethylene. Low-density polyethylene is only 1 million compared to 3 million grams per mole, so it's smaller and, de and less dense. That's why it's called low-density. It's branched, so it branches off, and is shorter. And these are the properties. And we're going to explain why the properties are important because we can use them for different kinds of plastics. Right? So I'll go over again the dot point, outline the steps in the production of polyethylene as an example of a commercial industrial important polymer. So we had low-density polyethylene, which was a had four steps to make it. Um, we had initiation, activation, propagation, and termination. Those were these four steps over here. Activation, initiation, activation, propagation, and termination. And to make the high-density polyethylene, we had to have a metallocene catalyst, which had in the middle of it a cychronium ion, which was kind of the thing that grabbed ethylene molecules and made it into a long chain. Um, now that's so, so this is actually a really important dot point because you can definitely get a short answer question asking you to outline the steps. So recall the steps of how you make polyethylene. So how these two steps you should be able to know how to make a high-density one and how to make a low-density one. So I hope that was helpful.